had a need for two tables to fit behind a sofa in an A-frame cabin, but I didn't want to spend a bunch of money on them. I also had some particular dimensions in mind and thought tables of that size would be a little hard to find. For the top set the tables, I picked up two inexpensive project boards at Lowe's. They were each 12 by 36 inches, the size I needed, so I didn't need to cut them down. They were made out of pine, and the label said they were paint ready, but it didn't say anything about them being stain ready. Well, staining was what I had in mind, so I thought I'd still give it a try. These tables were going to be mostly hidden behind a sofa, so even though I could have gotten away with some plain boards attached to table legs for this project, with access to laser equipment, doing some sort of engraving was pretty much a no-brainer. Because the cabin is already pretty kitschy with a lot of woodland-themed decor, I thought engraving the tabletops with something woodlandy would fit right in. I perused some of my favorite cabin furniture sites and immediately felt inspired. I remembered that we already had a nice pine tree design that one of our in-house artists, Emily, created. In Adobe Illustrator, I quickly made a repeating pattern out of the original pine tree design. Then I duplicated and reversed the pattern for the opposite side. I previously measured the boards to make sure they were the exact same dimensions and added an outer box to the file that we would use to make sure the laser engraved in the correct area. The whole process of making the file took just a few minutes. I really wanted to try staining the boards first before engraving, which is something I haven't done before. I chose a water-based stain because it dries fast, and I wanted to complete the project in a day or so, so I didn't feel that I had enough time to allow an oil-based stain to fully dry or cure. I lightly sanded the boards with some sandpaper, even though the manufacturer said they were already sanded and ready to go. And then I blew off the dust and wiped them down. Next, I started staining, and of course, midway through staining the first board, I realized that I'm an idiot and forgot to apply a preconditioner. Oh, you idiot! Earlier in the day, Smedley Works resident woodworking expert Sam recommended using water to condition the boards to mitigate any blotchiness, which is something I haven't tried, but been curious about to see how well it works. I've used pre-stained wood conditioner in the past for this, but water is a lot cheaper. Uh, duh. duh. Obviously, I was all for it. So I switched gears, did that, and went back to staining. Next up was the lasering. Dave spent some time making sure the board was in the exact right spot for the engraving. I didn't want the engraving to go too deep because I might put lamps or other items on the tables, so the surface needed to be pretty even. I thought a light engraving would be sufficient, so we used a setting that we use for other projects. As it was engraving, we noticed that it didn't make it through a knot in the wood, so before taking the board out, we ran the job again over the engraving to try to go a little deeper. For the second board, Dave tried an engraving setting specific to pine. That worked well, engraved faster, and it only needed the one pass. I found some inexpensive metal hairpin table legs on Amazon that I then screwed into the board. Of course, the screws that came with the legs were a little too long for the boards once they were engraved, so I scrounged around for some screws we had, which is why you see a hodgepodge of screws here. I didn't have time to apply a polyurethane before taking the tables up to the cabin, but I thought I could squeeze that in between projects while I was there. I put the tables outside to start doing that, got a little distracted doing other things, and then when I went out to start working on them, I discovered some sap had dropped right on both of them. I wiped them off, and lo and behold, the stain came off with it. So I moved the tables away from the trees and restained that area. Once that was all dry, I applied three coats of poly to the boards, sanding in between. For a relatively quick and easy project, I thought these turned out really nice and I loved everything about making them, mistakes and all. If I were to do them again or make them to sell, I'd probably use some finer furniture grade wood and add some trim or a router decorative edge. It would also be fun to experiment with different stains and applying a dry brush technique, which I really enjoy doing. I think that the customization options for these types of tables are endless. While this was probably just a one-off fun project for me, if I were to sell furniture like this, I think I could easily charge $250 or more per table, and I can visualize how to create an efficient assembly line or production process for making a lot of these at one time, which would help keep labor costs low and profits high. 
In addition to the design file I made for this video, we're also making available an assortment of border designs that you can use for your own engraving projects. Click the link in the description for information on how to access those files along with the files from our many other project videos. Thanks for watching. Let us know in the comments what you think and if you've ever thought about doing a project like this. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to get notified of future projects. We have more videos coming soon. Stay tuned.